Sky's the Limit hosted a presentation and showed off the new middle school courtyard. Student Ambassador Madison McDougall was kind enough to show HCAM News around the renovated courtyard. You could look through the windows and see the courtyard. Mm -hmm. It was quite ugly. Like, right. I didn't like to see this. And so then they cleaned this out, which now it's a lot more pretty. And so now you can do all the, these classes here. And so it's actually a good part for vitamin D. And it's a little cold right now because it's like seven o'clock. So I like, so that's what I like about it. And we're just gonna be adding just a couple stuff to make it educational. And so it's gonna be like pretty with like trees everywhere. Like a lot of what, like Mr. Gundes, the leadership teacher would love to do this. And um, it's just Borges, which is the energy and environment teacher would love to do this because it's like energy and solar heat, sunlight, which is, and then there's like grass and everything. So that could be that. So that is, so that is the student point of view, why we should have it, not like the teachers and like everybody else, even though their point of view is great. But I think you should hear from the students who go here. So I really like how it's cleaned out and pretty. And so we would use it probably about September. Can't really do it in the winter, it's too cold. And then like warm it up until the end of the year. So nice. yeah, the courtyard. And so the bricks will go right along there. Where the cement is, will go right, over, right along there. I then talked to middle school assistant principal, Mary Ellen Grady, about the Sky's the Limit project. She also introduced me to Nora Bonnell and Hannah Murphy, to Hopkinton students who are heavily invested in helping the project. The project Sky's the Limit started, um, it started a long time ago when I came into Hopkinton Middle School as an English teacher and I used to eat lunch in the corner of the library and I would look out the window and we had this big space with um, totally unused and I would dream about bringing my classes out there just thinking about how nice it would be to um, be reading poetry or doing a writing assignment under the you know beautiful sunshine and fresh air and I kept asking everyone can we is there any way we can do something with this and the answer that I got was no you can't there's nothing to be done and then I became assistant principal and I asked Alan Keller, who was my principal at the time, I said, do you think I could do something with the courtyard? And he said, go for it. So I created the school climate committee and on that school cl climate committee we originally started with just teachers and we brainstormed the idea for this. It's more than just a courtyard. But um, we also had a, school, a student school climate committee and in addition to that I had um, students that really heard about it and became really excited about it. This is Hannah Murphy, who is a freshman at the high school. This is Nora Bonnell, who is also a freshman at the high school. And they're two of my students um, that will always be my students. And um, they have been really, uh, they, both of them had a fun, had a, not a fundraiser, but they had a special night called um, Playing for Shane, who was Shane DeRoche, is one of the students that passed, our student that passed away last year um, in an accident on the open house night. Night. and these girls have um, been really uh, behind the walk that was done in Shane's memory and they have been part of um, creating this beautiful music celebration of his life on his first anniversary. Nora also last year at her birthday um, saw me in the hallway and just handed me this envelope and said, oh, Mrs. Grady, I've been looking to see you. And I got this white envelope and I thought, oh, it's probably a little note from, from Nora. Um, and, you know, I get notes occasionally from students and I always enjoy them. And I just put it in my bag that I carry around with my walkie-talkie. And I didn't open it until I went into my office later that day. And I opened the envelope and in it was a check. And it was a, a very generous check. And Nora had written that she asked for her birthday instead of having gifts she would like a donation to the sky's the limit so people gave what they would have given um, in cash or in checks and that went to the sky's the limit so she gave a very generous donation that was really from her heart and I think that just speaks to what this is about. This is something that is rooted in our community that we all believe in, that our students firmly believe in and are 
part of. Um, both of these girls have become really interested in fundraising and are considering it for a career. And tonight they made a connection with Mrs. Ayer and they're looking to be her um, in interns, thank you. <laughs> interns. So they probably you will see them. Uh, I'm sure they're going to be working on the skies of the limit with interning with Mrs. Ayer because she's been doing lots of work for this and this will give them some ex real life experience and I'm very excited for them but um, more than that I'm I'm proud of uh, the beauty and the generosity that you'll see in these two girls, the, the true kindness that they have and the love that they have for their classmates. So. Excellent. Now, what made you two so invested in this project? Um, well, I've always been really close to Mrs. Grady ever since sixth grade, and when she introduced the project to me, I just thought it was a great idea, and I think that it's a really awesome way to get students to learn in a different way and in a different environment. Well, with the extra money we had from playing crochet, and we had to like decide what we wanted to do with it, and we thought it would just be like a great way to remember Shane by buying a brick. Here, so we have outside this untapped, unused, really inaccessible resource that now people can go out there and use. So Mr. Gundes can take his class out there tomorrow if he wanted to, and we, you know, we've been out there and looked at it, and it's wonderful. Um, I, I just, I can't thank all of you. I, I, there, aren't, there isn't enough gratitude that I have to thank you for making this dream for our students and for our community to come true. So thank you. Um, if you could just take a look, our vision for the courtyard was to pr transform it into a vibrant, safe, outdoor learning and meeting space for our students of the Hopkinton community. This is not just the, the students of Hopkinton Middle School. Nora, you'll be coming. Hannah, you'll be coming. <laughs> Nate and Sophie, you'll be coming back here for class reunions and um, student council meetings and class meetings out here. So it's really for everybody. And it's for all of our community. Um, our courtyard will be dynamic. Um, it will be multifunctional. It will be for teaching and learning for all of our students. It will cross all of the disciplines, whether it's math or science or related arts. It's also a great place for extracurricular activities and community events and gatherings. Um, there, we will have a performance area to support activities like musical performances, poetry readings, smaller scale theatrical productions, um, just to name a few. We'll have flexible learning areas to support academic <coughs> curriculum and the ways teachers deliver the curriculum. We'll have a gathering space for informal and formal activities for middle school and greater Hopkinton community um, people that want to use it. Um, I'm thinking this would be a great space to have a wedding, and it would be inexpensive. So I, you can book it through me. I'm booking it through me. Um, so, so really, right? Um, the sky is the limit. So don't. You're just, you're just kidding about evangelism. I'm not kidding. Um, so it really is. It's a space for teachers and students to experience interactive, hands-on, real-life learning. Um, it fosters leadership, Mr. Gundes. Great place for leadership. Um, creativity, responsibility, collaboration. It builds a sense of community because our kids are going to be out there. They're going to be maintaining this so that it'll be their community. It will bring ownership and pride and environmental responsibility. Everything will be green. Um, it will encourage social and interpersonal development. It enhances critical thinking and problem solving. So all of those things. Think about how we can use it. Um, so right, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, although I would hope that you would. Uh, I have read about courtyards. I've read so many things about courtyards. You have no idea what you can do with this. The space that we are planning is not only intuitive, but it is grounded in research. Um, the topic has been studied and underscores the many points that we have just made. I'd also, um, I want to take a few minutes to also bring Mr. Gundes, who is going to represent our um, faculty on some ideas of things that they will use this for. Um, Mr. Gundes is right now an innovative leadership teacher. 
Um, he has brought that to our middle school. He's done it many years with our eighth grade group through the Leadership Academy and is now bringing it through sixth through eighth grade. Um, he was a science teacher here for years and he is going to enlighten you on how our faculty would, will use it. He's somebody I'm very proud to call a colleague and more importantly, a dear friend. So, Erin, take it away. Got it. Sure. You got it. So, as teachers, we are just pumped for this thing. And as a science teacher, I don't use podiums very well, so I'm just going to hang out here. As a science teacher, I remember for years and years teaching here right on that side of the courtyard in our classroom, face the courtyard, and we just looked at this thing, go through the seasons of the courtyard and see the snowfall, and then the flowers bloom and the grass come and die. And it was just this wonderful uh, space that we were always looking at, and everyone always, out. I always had students ask, Mr. Gundis, what do we use that space for? How do we get out there? And I never knew the answer. Uh, no one really knew the answer. We always saw a lawnmower out there and no one knew how it went out there or how anybody ever used it. But to see this thing come into, uh, into life is just incredible. And so the teachers in this school are just pumped to see where we can take this. And so Mrs. Grady and a bunch of others have talked to a lot of teachers. We've all collaborated on this. We have Google Docs going about brainstorming ideas of what this space could be used for and how we're going to enhance student learning. So a couple things on the slides that we will talk about. Uh, number one is just there's this useful when doing our unit. I don't know if you can read it from back there, so I'll read it to you. But useful when doing our unit on indirect measurement using similar triangles and, sh and shadows. So math department's going to be able to use this, no doubt, for their curriculum. Use the space for physics demonstrations, exploring the energy conservations that take place with light and heat from the sun, uh, making physics come alive in a secure, safe, and effective space. As a so former science teacher and now looking at what the science teachers could use this for, it goes way beyond anything we can imagine. Even using it for moon phase analysis and observations with what's going on outside, and we love that idea. This is something for uh, the literary discussions, the English department providing a cozy, roomy setting, which would create a relaxed environment for the literary discussions. And just so exciting to think about, I just imagine a dead poet society type of just <laughs> world where we're taking students outside with books and hanging out in the, in the outdoor space by the bushes and talking about poems and what's going on in the world. Such a cool environment for that. Holding book talks outside using seasonal or thematic books to enhance the reading experience while expanding the physical limitations of the library. Again, taking into account the whole creativity factor that comes with this outdoor space. And during the feudal system simulations, the courtyard would present an awesome place for building fortresses, reenactments, <laughs> role playing, peasants growing food for the manors. And just you can imagine what kind of recreations could go on in this outdoor space. And really what we love about this is that, you know, we're going and opening up a space that's an outdoor open classroom. The only thing that can do is help to open up the minds of the learners and the teachers and the thinkers of this space. Because you, you know, as they say, a, a fish will, a goldfish will grow to the size of its container that it's put in. And so you put the kids out in this open space and enhance their learning in that space and you just can't imagine how much we can get their growth to, to go from there. From a leadership teacher standpoint, forget about it. I mean, this is gonna be a space that we use continuously, taking students out there for team challenges, for group activities, for problem solving, different adventures. I even envision uh, we taking teachers out there for teacher bonding and collaborations early in the school year, um, just using the space for all kinds of ways to just bond our community here in Hopkins Middle School, but beyond. And if you ever do any research on spheres, you know that the center of the sphere is where most of the action is happening in, in life. And so this being the center of our sphere here in Hopkins Middle School in the community, it's just gonna be an awesome place for all of us to nurture the growth of students, but also just of ourselves and what this community is all about. Totally pumped for it. So thank you for your time. I cannot tell you how happy I am to tell you that $135,000 later, we have completed phase one and it was all completely done by private funds. So I've never been happier to see three doors in my life. So it's really, really a wonderful thing. Um, so I'm gonna step back a little bit and tell you uh, how, the, how we got to this point. Um, last fall, 
um, we really got this um, finally off the ground. Um, we determined that this project needed to be divided into two phases. Um, phase one was simply uh, getting access to the courtyard, putting in doors, clearing the space so it was usable. Um, phase two was going to be the actual interior of the courtyard, the design, uh, the creation, all the fun stuff uh, was going to be uh, phase two. We determined this was going to take us about two years. Um, so last uh, September, we really got the ball rolling and trying to just simply get the designs ready for the construction of these doors and all the code and all the regulations and everything that had to be involved with that. Um, this took us the full nine months to raise the funds and to organize ourselves so we could get this done. We could not have done this without a lot of the people in this room and a lot of people that weren't able to come. But I want to start with um, uh, Bob Keeley in the room. He gave, uh, he were, his company is Diversified Project Management. Uh, he introduced us to one of his associates, Frank Kennedy. He worked as a consultant for us and basically helped us with the whole concept of project management. Um, if I had maybe had a kitchen redesign, maybe I would have been helpful in this project, but it was a whole learning process for me on how to you start and begin and end a construction project. So um, Frank was really helpful with that. Um, but really, uh, one of our biggest sponsors here is Tom Dawson. Tom provided all his architectural services pro bono. He worked tirelessly. How many different redesigns did we do? How many different meetings did we have with the building inspectors? Mike Shepard is here. Thank you so much, Mike, for all your help. And Chuck Kalick, I mean, we couldn't have done it without you. Um, we were, you know, learning along the way, but, but Tom was, was helping us with all this stuff. Um, and we were um, getting to the point where we could finally, you know, finish um, the designs. We finished these designs probably late spring. Um, at the same time, we were fundraising because we needed to raise all these funds so we can start construction. Um, so by late spring, we were able to, able to hand this all over to Al Rogers, who Al took it from there, and he was able to find the right vendors. Um, to get us the best pricing, um, to be able to complete it on time. The construction, again, could only happen in the summertime. So we really only had very tight windows to get this done. And could not have done this without Al Rogers, who really did an amazing job getting this completed um, on time, on budget. So we're really thrilled with all Al's help, so thank you. Um, really quickly, oh, yes. <laughs> Um, really quickly, I won't go into a lot of the details of the project costs, but you can see the majority of the costs had to do with um, construction, <laughs> demolition, um, getting the doors ready for the masonry. Um, that was really pretty much the priority of our costs. Um, we also have the cost, simply the cost of the doors. We have um, the heating, um, the uh, HVAC costs. Um, we have a small amount there for the landscaping. Clearing the courtyard was probably the most exciting piece of this whole bit. We had, I don't know if you saw one of those pictures, but we had a hideously <laughs> huge satellite dish out there, uh, uh, completely covered by ugly chain link fence in concrete um, footings and with a beautiful uh, selection of poison ivy all around. And some of the, I've been told, the best in the city. Um, so we got that cleared. We got bushes and shrubs cleared. And so it's just one big open space and the plan was that the kids were going to have access to it this year so we would you know they, we'd be able to see some uh, reap some benefits from what we've done and then um, uh, then we're obviously ready for phase two which is going to be the exciting part so um, I'm going to pass this on to Kim now who can uh, discuss the interesting uh, parts that we're working on now so thank you very much so as Ann said, we've got phase one done. We're estimating that's about 60% of our project, 40% uh, to go. We're estimating that we're starting with about 100,000 that we're estimating to get our primary goals done. Um, we're going to, as you can see, the details that includes a performance space, flexible learning areas, gathering spaces, all the furnishings and equipment that we need. Um, so with a total of 235,000. Um, okay, so this is where we're at. We have st we're working. We've been working all along. We are in several stages of design. If you noticed over before uh, there before, there's our preliminary design of all of our initial vision of what we want in the courtyard. Now we're kind of scaling it down. Or not even scaling it down. We're making it um, realistic. We've got a group of uh, teachers, students with our design committee working out right now the details of exactly what we want to use have be in the courtyard. Um, 
So we're in the process of that. What we do know, we to make this manageable for us now in this part, we have two stages for our second stage. And the first is our performance area. That's our main um, goal to get done first. It's in memory of Shane DeRoche. As many of you know, a large uh, portion of the donations came uh, in his memory. And we're going to dedicate the stage, uh, the, excuse me, the performance area to um, in his memory. So that includes the audio-visual features, lighting and sound. Uh, we'll get that done. If you'd like to see, I don't know if you noticed over before, we have a very preliminary design that Tom has worked up for us for that uh, performance area. We that then we'll do the landscaping, the walkways. That includes all the bricks that many of you in this room have already bought. Um, make sure we have our accessibility which we, with our ramps and our signage. And then we'll move on to stage two, and that's the flexible learning spaces, our classroom gathering, um, and get the extra elements that we want, uh, that everyone wants to have in there. Our main goal is flexibility, so we can have performance, so that we can roll things in and out, and have classrooms in there, have it very multifunctional. We've got great ideas. We've got a lot of people involved in it. Anyone here in this room, I'll just put a plug. This isn't in my speech, but <laughs> <laughs> anyone who is interested in design, who has a background, wants to help, you are welcome to join us on our design committee. Give us ideas. Um, each person we talked to, we've toured a lot of different courtyards. We've done a lot of research. We learn great things every single time. So we're trying to take the best of and make sure it conforms with everything our teachers um, and students and community wants. Um, so uh, the things I want to talk about um, to this point are the success that, that we've had to date. Um, in addition to covering all the phase one costs, um, which as we mentioned earlier were $135,000, we have an additional $27,000 $27, in commitments, including cash donations, written pledges, and planned special events. And that's occurred since uh, September 2014. And those are earmarked for phase two costs. Uh, that results in a grand total of $162,000 that we have raised to this point. Uh, and that represents approximately 70% of the funding that needed to complete the project. I'm also pleased to note that we have more than 30 active volunteers uh, who, are jo who are, have joined forces to support this effort. I also want to acknowledge Dr. McLeod, our superintendent, who is here tonight and has been uh, incredibly supportive of, of this project. Uh, and, and we've been meeting with regularly to update her on the progress. I'd also like to thank uh, Jean Birchman from School Committee, who is here. And School Committee has been very supportive of of our efforts and, and we've been keeping them informed of, of our, our goals to this point. So thank you both for being here this evening. Um, I uh, also want to uh, acknowledge those who have supported our efforts. Uh, more than $40,000, as, as Ken mentioned a moment ago, was raised in contributions to uh, Shane DeRoche, in memory of Shane DeRoche. Shane's mom, Amanda, is here tonight, uh, along with Sean. Um, thank you very much uh, for being here. The performance area will be dedicated in memory of Shane. Over $30,000 has been raised from various HPS fundraisers and special events. Uh, things like the 7th and 8th grade dance, to the Hopkins, Hopkins talent show, to the spaghetti dinner, and Saturday's gingerbread house decorating event. Uh, this, all of these things demonstrate the commitment uh, of this community uh, to this initiative. Uh, we've also been the recipient of several generous donations from, uh, and grants from various organizations. The Good Works Foundation, the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Foundation. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Nyla Gray and Dorothy Maruska who were instrumental in securing uh, those grants for us. Thank you to them. The Nolan Family and the Perini Foundation uh, have uh, provided us with general, generous funding. Thank you sincerely for your generosity. The Hopkinton Education Foundation and the trustees of the schools have backed this project. They've con contributed a combined $18,000, again, instilling confidence and adding uh, credibility to uh, what we're attempting to accomplish here. An additional $18,500 has been contributed by the volunteer members of the Courtyard Steering Committee. Committee. In addition to their countless volunteer hours, they are also financing uh, the, this, this um, project. And I'd like to recommend uh, those members of the Steering Committee now. Uh, you've already seen and heard from Kim Pucci and uh, Ann Schneider. I'd like to also acknowledge Marianne Ayer, Ruth Peg Luca, Ruth Ann Cody, Marianne Dempsey, Liz Murchie, Joanne Lucas, Susie Estella, Beth Herlihy, and Rita Balboa. Thank you for your countless hours. Thank you. We also had the opportunity to have three marathon runners last year raise funds on behalf of the Courtyard Project, including Kristen Mercier, one of our math teachers here at Hopkinton Middle School. And as you likely have seen signs all over town, our Buy a Brick program is going strong, and it's raised over $11,000 to this point. 
Uh, also, we received support from various community events and from Hopkinton businesses and organizations. Earlier, we mentioned uh, diver diversified project management. They're financially supported the project in addition to providing pro bono consulting services. The Exxon Corporation, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, and Kathleen Buckley of Star Realty, the Hopkinton Garden Club, and the Hopkinton Breading Club. We'd also like to thank Bill's Pizza, Lee Burns, and Ritu Kapoor for conducting community special events that have benefited the Sky's Limit Courtyard Project. Again, thanks to all of you for everything you've done. Your time, talent, phil philanthropic support are key to helping us realize this vision. The Sky's Limit rings true for all of us here today, and we wouldn't be realizing this without all of you. At this point, I'd like to turn things back to Mrs. Mary Ellen Grady for closing comments. As you can see, we have great momentum for this project, and we want to keep it going so we can finish it and have it done this summer for the opening next year where you'll all come back. Um, Chase Lounge with your name on them. All of them ready for you. Um, so we, I really do. I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. This is this is like something that has been such a passion of mine, and working with the students in these schools. I'm, I'm looking at some of my students that are here tonight, and I'm just so thrilled. They have been so um, they've been monumental in working for us. Sophie and Nate have been presenting at school committee since the get go. And um, Nora Bonnell and Hannah Murphy have been unbelievably generous, personally generous, and doing things for our, um, for for us. So this is something that's really important. I hope you're as excited about it as I am. I don't know if you can be, um, but there there are. I just want to remind you there are many ways you can continue to help, volunteer your time and talent. So many of you are already doing that. Help us spread the word by hosting a a coffee or a cocktail party at your home. Um, of course, we would welcome donations anytime, um, from buying a brick to making a key leadership contribution to volunteering for a specific task or becoming part of the established committee. All gifts of time, talent, um, philanthropy are greatly appreciated. This is a true community effort. Um, I just want to thank you one more time um, for everything you have done, everything you do, and everything you will do. 